Hello and welcome to the first Beat It podcast. Uh, it's going to be hosted by myself, James Cooper, and my co-host, Ryan Murray. Hello, everyone. We are both teachers at the Birmingham Centre, but we're a national college um, in seven locations around the United Kingdom. And we offer a range of music technology and production courses at the moment. Uh, throughout this podcast, we're going to go through some submissions uh, from different people that have submitted through the uh, online interest forms. And we're going to go through some of our current students' outputs. Uh, this ranges from level one all the way up to our level three A-level courses. So it can give you a wide perspective on what students at Access Creative currently output. Uh, we are a very big college on embracing your creativity, um, so there's no limits on what you can create, and we do encourage you to find your own sound and promote that and nurture that in, into the sort of uh, ideal place that you want to be. So we're going to be having a chat, we're going to be reviewing some tracks, um, once again of current students and external people that have submitted interest forms. There is a fantastic prize of the industry standard biodynamic uh, DC headphones uh, that will be sent out to the winner, and that is the winner of the best track that we find, uh, both musically, um, commercially speaking, all the different aspects that go into it. Uh, but we're going to kick off with the track now. So this will be a track by one of our current students at the moment. We're just going to have a listen to it, review it, and kind of uh, understand the ideas behind it. So Ryan, if you want to take it away. Yeah, thank you, James. I'm really excited to play this one. Can I just say, James, unbelievable use of the stereo field in this. So the sampling in this track is amazing, panning from left to right. It's just the stereo image is, is amazing. And it's just all the little percussive elements in this oh, sampled man. really, really well. The percussive elements give you that really nice sort of bounce and feel that sort of feels natural to you. And I think the great thing about it is the way that they've took uh, such an old sample and made it blend into that sort of contemporary um, music. I think they've really sort of squashed it together and uh, made it a really polished product. Definitely. Massively agree with that. And especially now, you know, with a lot of people using a lot of 808s, this is kind of that hip hop sound, but also using original kind of uh, musical sounds and using yes. it in a way with, with the panning that just makes it sound completely, completely different. And in terms of uh, room for improvement, what do you think, yeah. what do you think uh, this, uh, this producer? I think a focal point that stood out to me, I think this might just be biased because I am a drummer, but that snare drum seemed a little flat. I'd like yeah. to see that snare drum have a bit more bite to it. Definitely. It's actually a bit more, um sort Re of reverb. corrective yeah reverb definitely but a bit more corrective eq as well yeah um and i think there definitely could be some elements that are brought up a bit more i think the focal point is the double bass and i think that's a fantastic thing for flow definitely, um, definitely. you know double bass and different sort of percussive elements uh, but i think that definitely that snare drum can come up a bit more have a bit more bite to it and we can spread the frequency a bit more as well how about yourself yeah i agree i think bringing out the the frequency range just just a, a little bit more and i suppose using eq both correctively and and creatively so if it, you know boost boost in the mid range for me i think it's always the mid range in a track which seems to be to be lacking but that that comes with experience and through learning a lot more which I know uh, this participant will be doing in, in the second year of the BTEC using learning, mi mixing and mastering, which is a, an amazing unit. Uh, I think a, a big part there is that that's a level three year one student. Yeah. So they've only had one year to sort of grow yeah. and uh, explore their talent. And the next year really does go into that, that sort of frequency spreading, uh, mastering and the sort of polishing your product elements, uh, because we've got a very good idea on how to compose music now, but we really want to make it a professional product uh, to enter industry with. So yeah, yeah cool. So should, we listen to maybe, should we listen to maybe a level two learner? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, have we got any of those available yeah. to us? We have indeed. So if we go for a level two learner. Yeah. 
Here we go. And for this level two learner, the, the reason why I've selected this song from um, a bunch of tracks this level two learner has sent over is they're normally producing a certain BPM and they've taken a completely different direction with this track. And I think it, it just sounds really, really good. So I'm looking forward to hearing this. it. filled the frequency range uh, especially the, you know in the introduction there's loads of synths going on sub layer underneath filling that that sub frequency range and then all the melodies on top and what i love about this is how this learner has incorporated several genres it's you know he, he creates electronic dance music but this is it's like a mixture of taking some of the the kind of drill element of drums especially with that that, that skippy drum beat and amalgamating it with uh, EDM sounds and I think it's very creative very different for the, the, the learner and that snare when it drops for me I just love that sound I think the toughest critic is your dog mate because he seems to definitely enjoy the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. kind of way that he's composed that I think that you um, of all people are definitely the specialist when it comes to this area of music so yeah. for you to speak so highly is definitely a good indicator I did like that kind of uh the reggae ton kind of vibe on the drums as well. The really sort of stripped back, and uh, I mean, at the moment with the heat waves that we're going through, I think it's a very uh, appropriate summer track to be uh, uh, to be had there. And 100%. I think, fantastically speaking, that's a level two learner um, that's come with such a talent for music. Uh, they might have just necessarily struggled a bit with GCSEs or something, uh, but they just absolutely shine. And I know from experience how, how highly that was graded. <laughs> Uh, those pieces of work so you know fantastic and definitely uh, really good to see and as just we were saying before just about having it as a, a professionally kind of mastered product i think this learner has mastered this a lot of the skills already to to have the frequency range full but it's also the dynamics he's not compressed too much and it's just really wide in, in the stereo field and uh, the dynamic range is it it's, it's full, it's good. I think, you know, that that would be ready to play out in, in a club. Oh, my, yeah. yeah. You're going to play that in the club then, Ryan, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I'll play it as definitely <laughs> a warm-up track, 100%. Nice, nice. nice. Um, should we go for, we've had level three, level two. Should we go yeah. for level one, maybe? Definitely. And I'm very, very, very impressed with um, this entry. Let's have a listen. <laughs> going to say it's going to be the first person to say that Ryan eh? it's yeah. definitely a, a Jay Dilla track I think that it's a, a very unique kind of lo-fi feel yeah. uh, it's got really sort of choppy uh, crunchy sort of uh, hi-hats going on it's got a really nice bass line I think that it's just a fantastic uh, chilled out piece of music uh, that definitely is something you'd listen to whilst you're studying eh? definitely and, and the sampling again for me you've got the it's like an LFO synth that's wobbling underneath right from the start it sounds like a kind of creaky per percussion and i absolutely love that and, and the, the piano that comes in and uh, the snare drum i think it, it it's just got that really vintage old school uh, hip-hop yeah. sound and in terms of in improvements for, for me just similar to what you were saying before as a snare i think that snare needs some treatment, a bit of reverb, yeah, just to, yeah. to, to gel it together. And the, the the sampling is just slightly out of key with that piano. Yeah. 
So I just need to just pitch in up and down. But the most amazing thing is this is a level one learner. And this level one learner has smashed it here. Absolutely smashed it. I've, I've taught in several colleges before and many level one learners are nowhere near that, that level of um, production quality. To, to be able to create a, a lo-fi beat of that standard at level one is just amazing. We're becoming snare critics, aren't we, Ryan? Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, listen to the next one, and we yeah. promise we won't say anything about the snare, OK? Yeah, yeah. So, Ryan, surprise me, just to play any ones at all. OK, I'm going to play a completely different genre. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, so we're playing a completely different genre. I think this is nice. It's like a mixture of trance and uh, like a bit more like faster dance. Um, I forgot what you call it, like kind of Scouse House. If you, if you, if you know okay, Scouse yeah. Scout. Yes, it's, it's like a mixture of trance and Scouse House. I love their melodies uh, at the beginning and um, also filling the dynamic range again with a lot of low frequency energy. Although I do feel... In this, the, the dynamic range has been quite squashed and overcompressed. Yeah. I think if we just yeah. ease a li little bit on, because when the drop comes in, it's like a bit of life has been sucked just a little bit just because of, of, of the compression. However, I love how, how it builds. I think um, it build, it's got like a really nice build up. How about you, James? What do you think about this track? I think it's got a really nice narrative curve. I know it's very typical of the, the sort of genre. Uh, that we're speaking about there but the way that it builds uh, to that sort of pinnacle and then brings itself in it really does sort of introduce itself well um, it's very easy to listen to and I think that it really does suit that sort of uh, club environment yeah um, and it definitely takes me back to when I was like 14 15 yeah definitely uh, yeah that's a, it's definitely a throwback there but yeah brilliant uh, I think just like you said um, just needs a few little tweaks on the mastering side of things yeah. uh, just to bring it out and spread it out a bit more uh, to have more professional elements but by no means a, a bad track at all just a really nice uh, emerging professionals piece of music yeah massively agree massively agree yeah, with that so one. We we've, had a, to... we've had a taste of everything now haven't we or yeah. have we got any which yeah. are the ones I um, think we've got actually quite a good sample one haven't we that we could listen to or ah yeah there's, there's one with a really really good sample um, and then we'll look at some of the uh, the people that have entered the competition just to sort of compare. So this learner um, always amazes me with quirky samples. And, and just as we've discussed um, how he manages to, to merge a sample that you wouldn't think would go with, with, a, with a beat and the bass That's the best way to describe yeah. this. <laughs> and I think to, to be able to do that is a skill because it, it's hard to do that without it sometimes sounding cheesy. And it's yeah. also really hard to do that with its it being in key and fit into the the and not ruining the original track. I'll play this one. Right. wearing a pair of uh, the headphones that the winner is going to win in this competition 
And that sub bass has just had me pulling some absolute <laughs> bass faces in these headphones. Yeah. The good thing is that, like I say, you can hear the full frequency response of these headphones. And that distorted sub has me, especially with that kind of surprise drop, was not not expecting it. And my bass face was definitely on. It's uh, it's just a, it's such a shocking, uh, a good way of shocking someone. I think it's quite nice to be unpredictable with your composition. And um, I think that this learner especially doesn't have a specified um, sound. I think this learner has a very broad uh, range of skills to offer in different genres of music. Uh, but as you said before, the way that to take a sample and then make everything that you do in key and work with it, especially something as crazy as that sample, is just absolutely phenomenal. So I think it's a brilliant piece. Right Definitely. Yourself? 100% and I, I, I love I love the mix in this because the, um, the the kick and the sub are really at the forefront. So if you was on a big system, that is really going to punch you right in the face with that low frequency yeah. energy. So I think they've done a really good job of uh, yeah, amalgamating the, the sample as well. In terms of mixing, I think that the hi-hats are just a little bit harsh and probably bring them mm. down a, a, a bit at 10K and maybe just add a, a, a bit more variation in, in the rhythm and the drums yeah definitely so listen to uh an entry from that's what we have yeah okay i've got this one here tell this um, producer has played this in themselves I really like the, the melody and the chord progression so the, the way the melody is coming back into the, the chord and the harmonization there is, is, is really good um, I, I really like the, the sound it sounds like they're using a Korg M1 don't know if they are I love the Korg M1 um, and yeah I think that's a, a really nice production in terms of me I think the musical elements are nailed there I really like the vocal sample, but it's just the, the mixing of, of that track, which you know, if this um, producer was to come and take a course of us, we'd definitely teach them how to bring out the 808. And just similar to the, the last track we played with the, the previous learner, because you, you, you'd want the 808 to just hit a bit harder. And it's just the, the mixing, professional mixing techniques that you'd learn if, if, if you came and studied a, a course with us. What do you think, James? Yeah, definitely. So I think that it's a um, it kind of introduced itself as quite an eerie um, piano-based track, potentially with some elements of dread in there, and then it dropped into sort of like a trap beat. Yeah. I think that the the piano and the melody fantastic. I think the introduction of the vocal sample was really good as well. Um, I think that there was a good. Uh, spread of different melody and melodic items there. I think the improvements definitely need to come in the the rhythmic section. Yeah. Um, so with the snares, the hats, and the, the kicks, and the, the 808, and how to make those synchronize up. I think it's definitely an acquired skill uh, to be able to make your 808 and your percussion match. Uh, but as you said already, it's a very popular thing, a very normal thing to need to learn. And it's definitely, definitely something that we, uh, we we definitely cover that uh, quite extensively uh, because that is the way that the music industry is going. There's a lot of use of 808s. And yeah. um, it's a very typical way to make the sound go. So it's, it's definitely something we teach. It's definitely something we do in our everyday life as well. You know, uh, all the beats that I've been making over my lockdown period have had to um, have those different elements in. Uh, so it's definitely something we've got real world experience in, and we definitely yeah, teach those. Definitely, hundred yeah. percent. And I think I think uh, just, just discussing that uh, will lead us on to this next track of what's popular at the minute. And one thing that I'm loving that's come into the drill genre in the last two years is the Afro influence. Yeah, I just definitely. love that sound. So I, I feel like it'd be a perfect time to play a beat with with that Afro influence. 
this is this sounds fantastic right let's hear it building throughout it's just um when, when you it, it can easily you can easily be stuck in a loop and just just use the same loop which the loop carries on but then there's more melodies that are introduced that i really like that and i just mm. like i said love that afro influence that, it, that is creeping in and I, I just hope it keeps people keep producing this sound because I just, I just especially at a minute we've been like you were saying amazing weather it just fits this weather perfectly at the minute yeah. I think that it's quite inspirational, especially for us as teachers, to see the students move their their composition into the contemporary things that are happening in the industry at the moment. I think it's a very natural thing um, for them to move with the times and stuff, and I think that that uh, really is a fantastic piece of music that embraces and encapsulates the sort of Afro, um, especially with Afro now getting its own, uh, own charting platform as well. It's its own. Yeah. Um, own platform and it's its own genre of music in its own right so I think that that's brilliant I think that there's a very authentic sound behind that and I think Definitely. I'd really like to hear some vocals on that as well yeah I'd love to hear some vocals on that and just in, in terms of room improvement just similar to the tracks just just the mix down again I think uh, especially the drums I think the drums could do with maybe some parallel compression or just yeah. something to just bring them out so the beefier again it in that mid-range it's really hard to bring that mid-range out in your track which does come from from experience most definitely i think just before we finish on that that track there um not meaning to sound like the you know the world's biggest plug here but i think that the interesting thing about access is that you've got a music technology course and we've also got a vocal artist course yeah. so when that learner does come back to us they can get a vocal artist to to vocal that track whether it is rap whether it is uh, the sort of wavy vocal or whether he's just a normal vocalist uh, to hop on that. It could be quite an interesting thing to cook up. So Definitely. I massively agree. Uh, and it's so good to have that cross collaboration as well with, with the music uh, pro performers as well. So, you know, uh, I've been going into the studio and laying some live instrumentation on top of, on top of that, um, yes. which, which is amazing that we've got the facilities of, and the professional recording studio for students to use. Absolutely, absolutely. What are you going to uh, treat me to this time, Ryan? Uh, this time, I think I'm going to treat you to some really good sampling again. Wizard. I really like this. This is another learner that is a wizard at sampling. And I think this is kind of just that old school hip hop vibe, but very kind of driving at the same time. love about this i know i've talked about it earlier on is um stereo width and oh, yeah. this this producer has chosen a, a, an old sample and you know uh, back in in the day early days of recording they were really experimenting with panning far left and right you can really hear that in the sample and i think using an old school sample with kind of 
a new approach to, to drums and how good plugins are today at bringing mm -hmm. out the, the production quality is really good because it's just got that really lo-fi sound, loads of stereo width with panning and instruments moving around. And uh, yeah, I just think that sampling with uh, the drums sounds amazing. Personally, I think the bass line could move around a little more, maybe play around with the pentatonic scale within the, the key that the track is in, just because it's just a bit static on, on the same notes. But apart from that, that is ridiculous, that track. Yeah. I think that um, it's, it's, I've got to press the agree button there. I don't really know what else I can really add to that. Um, it's getting quite deep now, though, isn't it, Rama, bringing that pentatonic scale? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's okay, it. Fair play. You got any idea what language that was for bonus points? Or I'm. I'm going to go French. Spanish, French. Oh, okay, yeah. well, I'm, I'm one not, of us is wrong. Yeah, I'm not a lingu. You're probably probably right there. I'm not a very good <laughs> linguist, as you know. I'm from I'm from Yorkshire, so yeah, same yeah. more. <laughs> I'm going to sit on my high horse because I'm from Birmingham, mate. So you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with everything you just said. So how dare you take all the uh, the points there, Ryan? Yeah. Do you know what? I think this would be a perfect time to, to listen to another um, producer that is not from our cohort of, of students. And I, I must Absolutely. say, I'm very impressed as this person has sent over a portfolio, um, an EPK. And if no one who's listened to this podcast knows what an EPK is, it's an electronic press kit. And I always hammer my students telling them you need to create electronic press kits. So if you do to come to study with us, I will be developing your electronic press kits. And what they are is it's basically a biography about yourself, but it's not just a CV. You know, CVs are boring. You want something that's exciting and engaging. And the EPK has pictures, uh, biographies. It gives you a bit of a, like, pictures of, of you playing at festivals, where you get all your social media is. And this artist that I sent over there, um, EPK, is brilliant. It's really visual. They've got all their experience. They've really sold themselves, which for me just stood out massively. What do you think about that, James? I think that an EPK is just such an essential thing, and it's a really thing, uh, good thing to have on your arsenal as a, an emerging professional. And as you've said, we, we're definitely focused around the the practical skills for learners and that when you do come and study with us you will be taught these skills and these hints and tips uh, from people that are currently practicing within the industry i know ryan is a he's definitely a, a massive person when it comes to djing and the production of electronic music among hundreds of other things and I, i'm definitely in touch with the urban side of things um, especially in birmingham i love the home talent sort of thing yeah uh, but yeah we've got experience with professional uh, famous people and we know what what sort of works in the industry yeah, and that's exactly what we're here to teach you guys and pass on the and knowledge i know james is absolutely amazing at building rapport with students but also of artist development not only in our college but he does ghost production yeah. out of, of college so he really knows how to take your sound and help you develop and perfect that and build that and that's what we, we do at our college which is amazing is we take you as an artist and develop you so you are ready to work in the industry and you have your yeah. original sound. Yeah, let's have a, 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 a listen to this. Let's lose ourselves, Ryan, let's lose ourselves. I really like how this is just a complete curveball in terms of different genre from all the other totally. entries. And what I think this is, um, for me personally, 
um, a really fitting genre of music to listen to. It, it, I, working a lot through the, the, the pandemic at the minute, I've been listening to a lot of um, more soundscape music and building on, uh, you know, like experimental electronic music. And this is really good to meditate, to, to relax, to, to, to work, to, and I think creating other genres like this is really good as an artist where you're not concentrating as much on the kind of rhythm base, but the musical elements, as that is where you create the emotion. And this artist themselves has definitely created emotion by using musical elements as a, as a driving force. And it, it step, what I like about this is it, it moves from, it's quite avant-garde, it moves from quite kind of like negative sounds also to like positive sounds. So it, it's, yeah. it's, it, it sounds really nice at some parts and then it starts becoming a bit kind of dark and sinister, but then it comes back out again to, to a bit more of a, a positive and uplifting sound. It's definitely, I think it's a very captivating piece of music. I think that it holds the uh, the listener's attention. And I think it's, uh, as you say, a, a fantastic curveball that uh, really demonstrates uh, a very sort of well-composed soundscape. I think that the artist has definitely hit the nail on the head with this piece of work. Um, and I think that it's a really broad, um, interesting piece of music that you can listen to either whilst you're doing something or just put both your headphones in shut your eyes and lose yourself in that piece of music. I think that the the way that he's orchestrated the melody and introduced that rhythmic element nice and slowly whilst he's bouncing around with the emotions, uh, going from positive to negative and all these sorts of different things, is a really aspirational and uh, well-executed piece of music. Definitely, I agree with that. And it's as I've said before, it's been sent in, in a very professional manner, which I'm, I'm re- I've been really impressed with. We do love professionalism. That's yeah, always a good thing. Definitely. I think we've got a few more pieces. How many more have we got left yeah, now? Ron? We have got one, two, three. Sorry, I'm just counting them. So I think we've just got three left now. Cool. Let's get through them yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close this out. So I just say, this uh, producer travels all the way down from Leeds to Birmingham to study, which is my hometown, can I just say. So I'm, I'm just very impressed that this um, producer has an absolute dedication to music, to travel four or five Jeez, hours uh, on a coach. Third year of travelling four or five yeah. hours every day, eh? Um, uh, it's definitely dedication. Definitely. And, yeah, amazing, amazing student. Let's have a little listen to this one. influence absolutely loving the uh, harmonies and the melodies this time i feel like i'm, I'm, I'm kind of critiquing and um, analyzing the tracks in a similar manner so i'm going to discuss a different approach this time i'm going to discuss the arrangement as i think this is something that's always kind of left uh, at the last like left to the, the last element of, of the production of a track rather than thinking about it from the start and I think this is where a lot of people struggle with his arrangement because this is where your track can become quite repetitive. I like how uh, I like how this producer has introduced the melodies and then the 808s, and it keeps it really interesting with the melodies and the drums and everything coming in. Um, and I also feel like the the mix down on this again could just do with a little bit more of an improvement with with the low end. How about you, James? What do you think? Yeah, I think I'm going to be uh, I'm going to betray everything we said before and comment on the snare. 
Yeah. I do think I do think that snare needs to be a bit more crisp, and I think the the percussion in general needs to become uh, more of a forefront playing thing there, especially in that genre of music that he's trying to go for. Uh, the percussion does need to be the heavy uh, main influence there. Definitely. I think that it's a it's a brilliant melody. I think that everything complements each um, element quite well. There was a nice sweet sort of sample. Um, hidden in there as well that complemented everything. So I think the arrangement is definitely a thing that uh, typically from what I see, people leave till the last. Yeah. Um, people kind of make a 16-bar loop and then just throw it around the place and different. But I think that planning things first, which is definitely something we teach and uh, preach to be the, the best way to do things. Planning things is definitely a, a, a way well, to go. 100%. And I completely understand that you should always uh, improvise and improvisation is important for creativity, but sometimes uh, it's, it's good to have a reference track, especially for arrangement. This is something I always bang on about to, to my students. They're probably sick of me saying it. And a lot of people say, oh, but you're copying, you're copying, but using a reference track is really important for um, a point of understanding how a professional production uses arrangement as well as a million other things. But it, I think it's a, as you were saying, planning, if you use a, a, a reference track that's in a similar genre, you might only use one aspect of, of, let's say, the arrangement. It can really help you bring your track out quicker and also finish them 500 tracks that you probably have sat on your hard drive that are not finished. No, I feel like you're attacking me personally there. Right? <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> if you can look through, I've, I mean, I've got the, the, the 500 loops that have never been finished, but... I always think it's a good way to start is, is using a reference track. And after teaching for five years, that for me always helps a lot of my students being able to finish a track and progress further. I think the big way to expose a producer is to uh, look at the unfinished tracks and see what they've named them. Uh, typically, yeah. <laughs> you go for a keyboard spam, and yeah, anyway. Um, we've got two more, have we, Ryan? Yeah? yeah, two more. Let's listen to a Sorry. completely different genre again. Let's do it, man. Sorry, I just played down a bit longer because I wasn't expecting the build up to be so long. But love how this producer has used uh, effects right from the start. Loads of white noise again, filling the frequency spectrum. He's got some chords playing um, at the beginning, just simple chords. And then he's into it, sounds like a, an acid kind of uh, synth fleet that's filtering in, in the background and building up. It definitely builds up for uh, a long time. Me personally, and I know this is in this is again, this is that old Tiesto kind of trance genre. Um, but I think leading back to what we were saying before about arrangement, I think this breakdown could be smaller. 
uh, as it just takes quite a while to come in. I think anything over it, still be, as, as a DJ and DJing for years, you, you can leave it too long for uh, your people on the dance floor to be waiting for a drop. And sometimes it can just kind of kill that, the, um, the build up can can kill the dance floor sometimes so maybe just a little bit shorter on the um on the build-up however i think when it drops it's really good there's loads of low frequency content and just quite a nice impact there and yeah loving all the harmonies and melodies what do you think james yeah much, much the same as what you were saying i think that it did take quite some time to build up and drop um, but when it did I think that if we weren't to say that this was a person entering um, an amateur musician's competition, you wouldn't really know. Um, I yeah, think that it, does fit, it does fit that bill of the the sort of uh, genre that he's going for. And it does sound very, very professional. I think it's just some of the intricacies that could happen there with the mixing and potentially towards the mastering side of things as well. I think that the key thing that we're saying now, though, and we're seeing is that the arrangements is a very important um, aspect of the music and I think that you know one minute 45 uh, to, to drop a song uh, can can really sort of ruin the atmosphere um, but maybe uh, that is that is something that could be quite affluent and work quite well um, but that's just my uh, my my opinion there yeah definitely I get I can't remember if I said this but definitely get the Tiesto vibe there kind of taking me back to the 90s enjoying to that the 90s, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, let's see. That I think it's just the last one. So we're going to close it out with the last one and then announce yeah. the winner. I think Simon, eh? Simon, Ryan? Calling you different names now, mate. I've forgotten which one. Just find the last one. The last one is... Uh, I believe it's that one there. Go up. Up, up, up there. Ah, there, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, very, very, very good producer. Uh, worked with several prolific artists. Um... And yeah, let's have, have a listen to this one. Are you okay? Don't go to the speakers, bro. Yeah, again, similar to uh, one of the other producers, pulling loads of bass faces with that one. At the start, I thought oh, the, um, the the bass sounded like it was like lacking in terms of mix down, but then as soon as it dropped with the drums, that sub is right at the forefront and making me pull several bass faces. Again, I, th I think um, the mixing of this track was really favouring that, that low frequency energy, which would sound really nice on a, a subwoofer. What about you, James? Yeah, I think that the um, the only in, the only criticism I could give that is that between the intro and the sort of drop of the song, there was like a half a step uh, missing. Um, so yeah. it did kind of sound slightly abrupt. That's probably just me being a, a really sort of uh, criticism based person. I don't think anyone would really notice that. I think it's got a really clean mix. I think that the two areas of uh, high and lows are really sort of uh, well mixed between. Definitely favours the low end, but I think that's quite authentic uh, to the sound of the genre that that person produces. Um, so yeah, overall just a great track and I can I could definitely see that being uh, used and utilised by uh, someone out there, whether that's a rapper or whether that's just released on its own. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you could. Uh, I think if it was just a DJ using that as a DJ tool, or yeah, yeah someone rapping over the, the top of it, definitely. Also, I think we're given a good insight into what our current students have. Um, I think that everyone that's uh, sort of uh, brought their stuff into the mix and um, put their entries into this um, alongside our students as well, it's going to be quite a hard thing to judge. I think that Ryan and myself, um, having listened to these over this period of time, um, 
we've kind of made our minds up and we've decided that there is a clear winner. Um, I think that it's a fantastic mixed track. I think that it's a really well put together thing and it's authentic uh, to the genre. And I think that this, uh, this person um, showed a very clear uh, progression throughout their track and it had a really nice narrative arrangement. And I think that it was an altogether well produced track and very authentic uh, to that genre. So Ryan's going to play the track for us now. And uh, we're going to listen to the track, so that'll be the first time that the winner is announced. And yeah. that person has won the Bad Dynamic DT headphones uh, that Ryan is so avidly promoting, having owning a pair. <laughs> but we're going to play the track, we'll listen to it all the way through, and then we're going to go to the end uh, where we will sort of close it off and tell you a bit more about the college. Uh, so thank you very much for giving us your time. Uh, I'm sure, Ryan, you want to say thank you as well? Yeah, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. Can I just say I am massively proud of all of our students. And one thing we do at our college, which I absolutely love, which one of these um, producers created is Battle of the Beats. And that is where our students play their tracks on our massive sound system in our performance space and battle it out against each other and it's so good to see our students fist pumping throwing bass faces and also supporting each other and it just shows you how much of an amazing sense of community we have at our college i'm really excited for that in this next upcoming ac academic year as well as i'll also be starting a music production club which will be working on them beats ready for when we do have the battle of the beats I think we've actually got our first Battle of the Beats locked in for October, so that's arranged. So everyone listening to this podcast, start getting your beats ready for that and then come to my music production club as well to, to help you get them ready for the Battle of the Beats. A nice sort of plug there, Ryan, for the yeah. music production club, yeah? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Cool, so yeah. we're going to listen to the beat now and then we'll, uh, we'll close it off after we've listened to that beat. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. Back in a couple of minutes. Thank you, everyone. All right, so that will conclude the uh, the podcast, the Beat It podcast, the first time that Axis Creative College have done this. Uh, we'd like to congratulate the winner, Lucas Smith, um, for his winning uh, submission of song. Uh, Ryan, have you got any final words for him? Yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone for entering especially Lucas for entering the amazing beat with loads of 808 drums and some really nice melodic parts. It's been really good to listen to loads of different productions and give them our judgment on what they can improve on and how they can move forward as music producers. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.